Houston, we don't have a problem. Today we want to talk about one I think the coolest of all volcanoes, if that is, that's the vo composite volcanoes. Now we've learned already about composite volcanoes. They're also, by the way, called stratovolcanoes. One thing we see with the stratovolcanoes is they have that nice peaked shape. They, they have this very steep shape. Let's cut to a quick video I shot this summer outside of Seattle, Washington. What you can see is uh, one of the great classic of volcanoes. We have a composite volcano. This is uh, Mount Rainier right here. As you can see, there's a massive city around me. There's downtown Seattle, the cruise ship, and then this mountain. And if it were to explode this close to this population center, it would have unbelievable consequences. You can see the shape of Mount Rainier and you can see how it has that shape. So they're called composite because they're made of composite materials because now remember these are the ones that explode, right? Now when one of these stratovolcanoes explodes, if they explode upward, what happens is then all of the composites, the broken rocks that come out of the explosion, fall down the slopes and then over time they get thicker and thicker and thicker and it builds a nice steep sloped volcano. Let's ask the question, where do they occur on the earth? Well, they only occur on plate boundaries that are converging plate boundaries. Either ocean ocean or uh, ocean continent. And that is because, as you know from previous uh, learnings, is that if I have a plate that subduction, remember we talk about subduction, what happens is it's going to push these mountains up. And then what happens is at this boundary, this is coming this way and this plate is coming this way, there's going to be friction right here, which is going to melt rock. That melted rock then, because it's less or melted magma really, that melted magma is less dense than the rock itself, the solid, it's going to rise. And as it rises, it pushes up the volcanoes. As a note, what's also happening, especially along coastal America, right across like uh, northwest of the United States, is that when it does the subduction, what happens is, and you've got the continent that's colliding here, this causes this to buckle. It's like, think of a, a car... At the front, when a car has an accident, there's that crumple zone. As it crumples, it causes the land to make mountains. But then occasionally, what you have is in certain areas, you get these large magma chambers, then they start to rise, and then you get the actual composite volcano. So why do they explode? They're exploding. Why are they exploding? Now, a couple of key factors that cause a composite volcano to not ooze out, but to explode. Number one, it's the content of the magma. The magma is thicker, right? It has a higher silica content. It's thicker, or we could say it's more viscous. Now, if you think about this, it's kind of like, <laughs> a little gross analogy, it's kind of like your a toilet getting clogged, but in reverse, right? You've got your uh, composite volcano, and you've got your magma chamber, and it's rising, but it's really thick stuff. And it tries to get to the surface, and it tries to get the surface because it is so thick, it re-solidifies. And it makes rock. But there's still always this upward pressure. Now, what's also happening at the same time is what almost always causes the big sort of dramatic explosions is that one of the things that's in here is something called a hydrate. Now, in chemistry class, whether or not you had time to learn this topic, it's a very important concept in chemistry. There's lots of chemical compounds that are have water in them. So a classic chemical compound that oftentimes you use in chemistry class is CuSO4, copper sulfate, dot 5H2O. So it's not just the copper sulfate, it's a cool little blue crystal, but it's this 5H2O, and what happens is, is if you heat this up a lot, it makes the water leave, and you're just left with copper sulfate. But if you take water, of course, that's a liquid, and you heat it up a lot, it turns into water gas. And water gas takes up 10,000, that's right, 10,000 times more space, or the pressure is 10,000 times greater. And so you get these gases 
this water is getting pressure and pressure. And what often happens in these volcanoes is they start to form a bulge on one side, and it could be the bulge at the top. And as this bulge happens, eventually the pressure has to go somewhere, and Johnny Boom Boom, it will go off. Let's take a look at a video that shows a uh, composite volcano exploding, and let me talk you through it. Here you see a volcano in Ecuador, a composite volcano, and it's erupting. Notice all the composites coming down. That's the stuff that's going to keep making it steeper and steeper. Same shot during the day. Notice how quickly it suits the, the, the composite, super hot uh, composites going down. Also, you can see the ash clouds that they often form. This one's exploding straight up. That doesn't always happen. The ones that shoot sideways are really the most dangerous. And of course, we've already learned about this, but the classic example of a composite volcano in uh, recent memory is Mount St. Helens. And just this past summer, I had a chance to visit Mount St. Helens and uh, learn a lot about uh, its explosion. And let's take a dive down underneath-ish uh, Mount St. Helens. In this museum exhibit, they've got something very interesting. You've got the different layers of rocks. Again, this is all simulation. But notice that we've got these layers of rock that we're going down into. And of course, under the volcano, you've got this magma chamber that is putting pressure up on the mountain. And even to this day, doing the same thing. Here's what the mountain looked like before. And here is a clip of it actually erupting. Started with an earthquake, and then the earthquake, huge, one of the largest landslides in the history like of well, the world, or at least recorded world. See how the mountain, and then that erupts. You get a first explosion out the top, and then you get this side explosion. Awesome, incredible. And this is what it looked like afterwards. When I was visiting, we visited the ranger station, and I shot this video because they had this great mock-up of what the volcano looked like today, and you can see just the whole side got just massively destroyed. And then let me show you from my perspective when I was up close to the blast zone. Now you're not gonna believe me, but right behind me is Mount St. Helens. And Mount St. Helens had erupted in 1980. And if we were here on a clear day, we would be able to see the lava dome maybe here, and we would see all this amazing stuff. And uh, yeah, but uh, of course the day I showed up is the foggiest day of the year. Well, it was unfortunate, but it would have looked like this when it exploded. Again, the key things I want you to remember are what causes it to explode, right? What causes this is the thick magma gets clogged. Then you have these, this huge amount of water gas that create huge amounts of pressure, and then it explodes. If it explodes straight up, you get the nice layered uh, rock. But if sometimes they blow out the side, which is what happened in Mount St. Helens, and it devastated uh, local communities. So composite volcanoes, stratovolcanoes, are fascinating, Houston, and we get to learn about this. Wow, the power of nature, the power of God in nature is just amazing. Houston, we don't have a problem. We'll see you in class.